Hi, this is Peter Davis of Jigsaw Trading. In this video, I'd like to take some time to focus on the benefits of using swing charts. And you can see swing charts here, the green and the red lines with the numbers above and below. Now, the numbers represent the size of the move. In this case, this is a move down of 84 ticks, and also the amount of volume in the move. So in this case, again, we can see this down move traded 78,000 contracts. For the coloring, a green line is an upswing that has more volume in it than the prior downswing. And the green line is also a downswing with less volume than the prior upswing. So we can see that this downswing here at 13,000 contracts after an upswing with 35,000 contracts. So that makes that downswing slightly bullish just because of a general or relative lack of participation. The bars we can see here are 900 tick bars. And I like to grade the bars out so that I'm not paying too much attention to them. Sell. In fact, I don't pay attention to individual price bars at all. I'm just interested in where the market has been and which side the volume is on. So right now it's, let me just check the clock, it's 9.02 on uh, the 12th of February 2015, we're heading into the open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record the morning session and then create a short video showing the highlights of what these swing charts show us during this session. Now obviously I can't guarantee that this will be a directional or a choppy day. So we're just going to have to take the action as it comes and we might need to do another video uh, to show the benefits on a different kind of day. Now we can see, as well as that, we can see some other lines on this chart. So these green static horizontal lines show me the high and the low of yesterday's range. So if I do that I can see the high of yesterday and the low of yesterday. The blue lines here show me the high and the low of the overnight session. So when we roll into the day session, we get to 9.30, we're going to see some blue lines appear. And the white line shows me the open. Now the green dotted line, the thicker green dotted line, is actually just marking the current price so that when I look at this chart or this chart or this chart, I can just see immediately where exactly where we're trading relative to the other prices. What I've also got over here on the dome, this is the jigsaw dome. And you can see I've got some prices of interest already marked out in the dome. So in terms of areas of interest from my analysis that I've done before the market opens, I don't put those on my chart. I put those on my dome. And we can also see up here we've got the Dow. We've got the NASDAQ. And we've got the NICE tick as well, which aren't really essential to this discussion. But they may help us, for instance, to confirm... Uh, if it does look choppy on the swing charts, we may need to just kind of refer back to these uh, to get confirmation of that. So we can't kind of guarantee what kind of day we're going to have. and We can't really guarantee what other supplementary information we'll need, whether it be the other indices, nicely tick, the dome, or even time and sales or the strength meters. But we're going to primarily focus on the swing charts. So what I'll do now is I'll stop talking. I'm going to do the recording. And as the action develops, we'll talk through exactly what we're seeing on these swing charts and what it's telling us. So we can see we've just opened. Uh, we opened here at 73.75. We can see before the open we had this push down 32,000 contracts, but this is in the overnight session. So what we can expect now as we get into the day session, we'll have considerably more volume uh, on the swings. Although I was saying that, these swings, they do, you know, 78,000 contracts, 35,000 contracts. That is quite decent volume for a swing, even in the day session. Awesome. So what we can do is let it, let it kind of develop over the first 15 minutes and see you know, if we get some clear direction, especially when we get an open like this. Um, you know, if it does kind of stick here and we move down from here after not moving up through the open, that's very strong. If it tends to kind of rotate up and down, uh, we might have to wait a little bit longer for it to establish direction. So let's just keep an eye on it uh, and, and wait for the first swing to establish and see if we can get a bias, because primarily what we're trying to do with the swing charts it's more to get a bias and also to stop us fading, uh, fading very strong moves uh, and stepping in front of strength. Okay, so if we look at the time, we're 15 minutes in. We said we'd come back after 15 minutes. What are we looking at here? Uh, we can see uh, we extended the swing up off the open, 58,000 contracts, but really we should kind of cut off there. Uh, we saw a swing down, 90,000 contracts, swing up 9,000 contracts. 
Uh, there's not a great deal of volume right now. Um, we had the push down 41,000 contracts again. If you compare that to the, the size of the volume in these swings we had overnight, it is pretty. Uh, there's not a lot of commitment basically either way. Um, if we look on the volume profile, it's kind of you know we're just basically uh, rotating around this high volume area. Um, we do have some iceberg orders on the way up there, so that is slightly bullish. But basically, from a swing chart perspective, um, nothing to really do. What we'll see. When it does finally establish direction, you'll see, boom, a lot of volume come in. And so we're still kind of waiting for that to happen. So right now, um, overall, uh, today, above 68.25, I'm, I'm fairly bullish, basically, for today, looking for some upside continuation, a run to the highs. Um, so I am looking for a breakout above um, that swing that's just printed there, the 18,000 contract, obviously it's not finished yet, it doesn't, you know, it's just printed the swing, doesn't mean um, it's now going to move down, it can still carry on moving up and extending that swing. Um, so as it's building a swing, don't pay too much attention to the volume in the swing as it's building, you know, I'll wait for it to kind of say, oh, you know, I'll wait, wait for the swing to, to be fully established, so it's now with 20k, and, and maybe even start to pull off and put in a down swing before I really consider it. Obviously, if this swing here, you know, we get 40, 50,000 contracts, then obviously we've already beaten the um, number of contracts above. Then I'll take it seriously. But while we're basically below the volume Last in the prior time. swing, I don't really pay much attention to it. Well, it says just see how it develops. And what we've got, obviously, at the top of this swing here, we have some people who went short. So if we can pop out of the top here, um, we could see a little bit, a bit more of a run. Okay, there's another 3,000 contracts. Okay, so now we're running a little bit. It's starting to look a bit more bullish. Um, the X here is one of the lines in the sand from overnight, basically, where we had a big step in the volume profile. Let's just see if we can get through that. We've also got this area here from overnight. We had these two swings, a double top, obviously. So people are going to be looking at that area, 77, 75. We'll just let it move up a little bit. Now we had a push up. We've got a new high, but we don't really have massive participation yet in that swing up. So right now, if people are fading that move. It's not something I do personally, but again, it's not as if you've had overwhelming volume on the way up. So it's not as if there's a ton of people that are positioned there. But personally, I'd kind of wait to see what happens. Um, looking maybe at 75, 20, 75 it to pull back or come back to the open price uh, and hold and then confirm that we've got an up move. Okay, so now we're at 35,000 contracts. We can see the participation is there. All we're going to do really is if we can put in, you know, 50,000 contracts on a on a good upswing, um, then basically what that would be uh, a signal for me to actually start looking for a long entry on a pullback with weak volume. Anyway, so let's just watch this play out, see how this swing develops. Okay, so we can start to see the first signs of possibly pulling back. And I'd say, if you look at these, you know, this, this little cluster here, uh, we've also can see it on the volume profile at 2076. Um, we were looking like we wanted to pull back. We, we need to basically get below that cluster to have a proper pull back. But we can basically see uh, the 47,000 contracts. The blue line here is the overnight high, which was made up there. So basically, we're just plotting up. We do have better volume on this swing up again not overwhelming volume look at the overnight moves a much more volume in the overnight moves which is unusual uh, we're not really seeing a, a lot of volume coming right now if I bring across uh, this indicator here which is relative volume with 16,000 contracts below average now for the time of day and so basically we're not seeing Last a huge day. amount of participation Okay, so now we can see again that we're showing signs of pulling back. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, I'm not sure whether we'll see it today, but quite often, as you develop through the day, you can develop a common or a, you know, a consistent pullback size on the way down and the way up. So we've gone up 27 ticks. Hard to say how far this will pull back. Probably if we look at the volume profile, you know, I'd say probably down to 20, 2076 
uh, possibly sit or 75 75 might be where we stop but basically what we're going to do is, is watch this market come down we can now say we've got upward momentum so basically what we can do is look and just watch how far it trades down here but we've got upward momentum here we've got momentum on our side we've got a lot of traders that got long so there's no reason to fade this market also the Dow the Nasdaq the tick are still positive now obviously it could just go straight down from here could go straight down from here um, we got down to 7650 um, so if we wanted to go long um, you know this is about where we'd want to go long although we don't really have any prior pullback today to kind of gauge the size is this a decent pullback so really what we're watching at this point is okay nine ticks after 27 tick move I guess that's not a, not a, a bad pullback relatively um, it's not very deep but again it's not going into this low volume area here um, so now we watch so we've come back nine ticks 11,000 contracts that's a weak move down so far doesn't mean it can't go down anymore it just means there's weakness so we'll watch now if you can pop through the top so one of the things to watch for as it comes back up to this area is another weak move upwards so you need to really so. see this you need to see this kind of power through volume so sometimes you get the pullback and then the next swing up is also a red swing with weak volume and then you're looking at basically it fa failing to get through uh, the high again and, and that's a good sign that your, your trend is basically over So again, what we saw basically, we saw push up with volume, we came back, there was no volume to the downside swing, we pushed up again. So, you know, we've, we've still got to keep the, the long bias right now. But we're at no point, even when we saw the market stall, we saw the market roll down, there was no real strong reason to, to fade it at that point. Um, because there was no real volume to the downside, it was just this, that sideways movement. Okay, so we've moved up 72,000 contracts, 15 ticks. Block sell. It's not a very big move. And we don't really have much separation actually between, if you look at the, the you know, the, the, the action, we've actually moved sideways here and we pretty much moved sideways above, just above where we were. So yeah, the swing, uh, you know, from this point to this point is 15 ticks, but there's no real threat separation there. And we want to see separation. When we, when we take a swing up, we want to see some air between the trading ranges um, that develop at the end of each swing. Black so again, this is, this is definitely bullish still, um, but it's not really clear direction. It's not really clear move. And again, if we look at the volume, volume's really tapering off. Okay, so what we're seeing now, we're seeing some acceleration to the downside. Again, right now, I wouldn't take a short right now. I'd still be long biased. But I can see, obviously, the nice ticks going down, the, the Nasdaq's going down, the Dow still in its range, but at the bottom of its range. Um, so I would proceed with caution at this point. Obviously, we've had a sideways range, we barely moved up and had another sideways range. Um, so really no separation there. So what we're looking for now, again, as we come through here, we might even see it as we're talking, as we come through here in this, pro this area here, we're looking for some acceleration down. A big push down we should get some people stopping out that should give us the volume and that should be enough to turn the market around just because people can see effectively what we've done we've gone a tick through the overnight high and failed and whilst there's not a rush of people coming in uh, some people are going to start to smell blood and they'll come in they'll see something they'll say okay I'm going to get short uh, and then we'll start to see the market turn around okay so moving ahead slightly what we can see overall is that we have no clear direction if we look at the delta the delta at the bottom frame of the swing chart is pretty much going sideways we don't really have any clear conviction or any um, bias in terms of volume to the upside and the downside we've got down swings with higher volume we've got up swings with higher volume so basically we're moving sideways and again this is one of the benefits of using swing charts is it allows you to take a step back and not do that whole thing when you, the market starts to range of like, I'm going short, I'm going long, I'm going short, I'm going long. So we're looking here, we're having to push down 33,000 contracts again. We've got Delta coming off a little bit. But again, really, we need a sign now. We need a sign that we're going to break out of this range. Otherwise, our game is to fade the market. 
Okay, so there's nothing wrong with being in a range, and there's nothing wrong with the swing charts saying you, that you're in a range. But when that's the case, um, as you see the swing down, we really are in a range, and we don't want to play a trend game. So we're now moving into the range that we developed just after the open. So let's kind of see what happens and see where we end up. But what we're waiting for now, we're waiting for the market to break out so that we can change strategy. So right now, we play a range fading game. And once we actually break out and we actually see which side the strength is on, then we'll play a trend game. Now, the reason I expect it to break out is because obviously as we move sideways, we're building positions both sides of the market. And at some point, we expect one side of the market to get stopped out. And that will create a move that we then expect to actually be extended. So again, you could buy the lows here and wait for a run through the high and you know maybe scale some off at the current highs and hold for a runner or you can actually wait for the range to break if the range does break our expectation should be that we have plenty of move to actually capitalize on if the range breaks it's not just going to break out two points and then stop so that's our expectation so I'll move forward um, I'm not going to do any more narration over this range let's wait for something to develop where it looks like the range is going to break and then we'll start narrating again. So what we can see now we're breaking out of the top of the range. Uh, we've already broken out the top of the volume volume area in the range. We're breaking up so we want this to push up. We want to see a bit of a stop run um, and then we can say the range is broken. Nasdaq's breaking upside. The Dow's breaking upside. It is lunchtime. Uh, traditional, tra traditionally quiet time in the markets uh, but obviously it's not lunchtime everywhere in the world. Uh, we do tend to quieten down. So really what we're looking at now, we do have the strength of the upside. We're just looking to see if the range is going to hold or fail. Okay, so we can see what we've done basically. Uh, we had the push-up we were interested in. We came back and we held this area where we kind of had a bit of a range. We've held that. That's bullish. We've just got to the top. There will be people fading this top uh, because people do like to sell the tops. Plus this is in a range. It is lunchtime. It's not lunchtime everywhere, obviously, but it is a traditionally slower time. The Dow is pushing up, Nasdaq's pushing up. So we just need to take this through. Once we take this through, then we'll be looking for a small swing to the downside. And if we get that, people will jump on this and buy. And probably even even buy up to the, the all time high, which is twenty eight eight seventy five. We could get a good run here. Now we have a pullback. And we have a nine tick move and 24,000 contracts. Now, one of the things you can say, somebody will say, well, that looks strong because we had 167,000 contracts there and it only moved 31 ticks. And we've moved a third of the way back, almost a third of the way back, on only 24,000 contracts. So it's taking less contracts to move each tick down, okay? Um, that's one way of looking at it. it is in my experience the incorrect way to look at it um, this is just slipping backwards there isn't a, a lot of commitment behind this move so as long as we've got this kind of relatively uh, low volume um, shallow pullback it can pull back some more no problem this is the kind of action where if you can find an entry now this would be the kind of thing you need to see for continuation trade now obviously we don't want to see it um, coming down to 2076. Um, so let's just watch this develop. There's still a danger of falling into the range, obviously. Uh, but what we're looking for now, uh, we're looking for buyers to jump in. And what you can do is you don't need to enter at this point. You don't need to say, right, I'm now going to catch this move down at some point. You can wait till you see some buyers come in. So if buyers come in at this point, the chances are you're going to take out the top of the range. So you don't need to buy the low of this swing down. What you can say, you can say, well, there was a lot of willing to buy up there. And on the way back, there wasn't a lot of participation. But if it starts to go up, the guys who sold down here are probably going to bail up and we're going to get another decent volume leg up. So let's just watch for that. Let's just watch for it to start to move back up and see how the, the legs uh, the swings progress. 
Okay, so we've seen some buys come in. Swing down was 13 ticks, 38,000 contracts. So expectation is we'll see another leg up. So let's just see if that uh, happens and we get out of this range. We're the next leg up, I expect then we'll start trending. Also, we're, we're kind of getting through the lunchtime period as well. So it should start to pick up. Okay, so we see a little pullback. Uh, 18,000 contracts. Again, nothing to worry about. Still still bullish, still looking to the upside. Uh, obviously, if we if we put in another 20,000 contracts downside and we push through here, again, uh, wouldn't really expect a reversal as much as just going back into this range. Okay, so another little push up. So let's see how much volume we got on this one. We've got some large uh, buyers on the way up there. Let's see if we can actually get some room, you know, really get some price movement up here. The last leg up was only really go, it gave us another couple of ticks, uh, two ticks to be exact. But NASDAQ and the Dow still seem fairly bullish. I'm not sure if the the high up there is actually scaring people off. The real time high is 28.875. Um, no reason we can't get there today at all. And no signs of bearishness, no signs of selling. Uh, strength is strength and volume is all on the upside. Let's just see how far we go. We can't keep putting in these small legs with kind of mediocre volume. This isn't great volume, 39,000 contracts for our leg up. You know, if we look at what we we had before, so we need a decent leg up. Otherwise, we're going to start seeing um, you know the red down swings, and we're going to start to see some sellers coming in. Basically, just taking advantage of the fact that the buyers aren't getting anywhere. So if the buyers aren't really getting this progression, the sellers are going to come in and have a look at them. And obviously, there aren't really buyers and sellers. There aren't traders that just buy and traders that just sell. It's all speculation. But if the if the people, you know, watching this and seeing that those that are bought aren't really getting anywhere, you know, they might say, well, I'm not going to look to buy anymore. I'm going to look to sell. Um, so that's what we're looking at. So we need a bit of price regression upwards so let's just see how we get along okay so as the video is getting a little bit longer what I thought I'd do is just a recap at the end of the day obviously we just saw more of the same as the day progressed the blue line here is effectively where we cut off the last video and we can see we were looking for a decent push-up and we did get that we did get uh, 64,000 contracts on that push-up we came down 30,000 contracts all the way up always green on the way up and the way down size obviously very much to the upside then into the close as we get towards four o'clock we did see um a red swing here we did see we, we didn't quite make it to the top that time the close itself is very unique in terms of the type of action you get uh, so i wouldn't really um call that a reversal at this point i wouldn't be looking to trade into today uh, this is the globex session the overnight session right now it's 2 a.m eastern time so I wouldn't be looking to, at this and saying that's a sign that the market's reversed. I'd wait to see what develops in the Globex session and, and the day session. But basically, it's a good overview of the swing chart. We've had both the sideways action and some trending action. And it's just a very simple piece of information. Is the volume to the upside? Are the pushes up bigger than the pushes down? So it's not the only tool that you need in your toolbox. It's not the only technique it's very 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 good for setting bias it is good for setting entries especially when you start to trend and obviously what this is also good for if we look at the pullback size 13 10 11 14 we can see there's only a four tick difference between the smallest pullback so as we see these pullbacks start to paint on the screen we can actually use the size of those pullbacks as a measure of volatility to figure out kind of how big the next pullback is going to be so again, it is good for entry, but this is a tool in your toolbox, uh, very good for setting bias, very good for taking your eye off the minutiae of all these individual price bars as well.